This is Brandon from Sweater Cat Designs, and in this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to use the Mirror Symmetry Path Effect to create a symmetrical zombie head for a logo. First, I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel and pan over here so that the page doesn't get in the way. Now, let's switch to the pen tool and create a path for one side of the zombie's head. Now, let's either right click or press Enter to finish the path. And we don't have to worry about getting these two points lined up because we can easily take care of that when we add the mirror symmetry path effect. Let's now open the fill and stroke dialog with this button. And I'm going to switch to the stroke style tab and increase the width of the stroke a lot. And I'm going to give it a green fill. Now, in order to use the mirror symmetry path effect on multiple objects at once, we need to group the objects together and add the path effect to the whole group. So first, let's go ahead and group this path by clicking this button up here. Now, let's open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects, then click this plus button down here, then click on mirror symmetry here. Okay, the only thing we want to change in here is to check this fuse paths option. This will allow us to connect the sides without them needing to be exactly touching. Let's zoom in some by holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel. We can now switch to the select tool and double click the group to enter into it. Then we can switch to the node tool and move this node over to fuse the parts together. And we can adjust the other nodes and the changes will be automatically mirrored on the other side. And because we're inside the group that has mirror symmetry added to it, we can add more objects to the group and they'll be mirrored as well. So let's work on the face now. For this, we can switch to the pin tool and let's change shape up here to ellipse, which is great for doing line art. I'll start by drawing a path for the eyebrow. As you can see, the ellipse shape option makes the path tapered at the ends. And we can switch to the node tool and use this diamond handle here to adjust the width of the path. Now I'll create the eye. For this, I want to turn off the shape option. I'll make the stroke width thicker. and give it a white fill. Now I'll switch to the select tool and click this lower one step button up here to put the eye path below the eyebrow path. Now I'll switch to the circles and ellipses tool and create a simple black ellipse for the pupil. Now I'll go back to using the ellipse shape option with the pen tool and create the rest of the face. I'll speed this part up. For the mouth, I'll create a normal path here. Turn off the stroke by shift clicking the red X down here and give it a black fill. Now I'll draw a path in here for gums. Turn off the stroke and give it a pinkish fill. Now do the same at the bottom. I'll use the color picker tool here to give it the same fill color as the top part. Now let's create a path for a tooth. I'll give it a white fill and make the stroke a bit thicker.
And we don't want this path to be too close to the mirror line or the sides will fuse together like this. Let's continue with the rest of the teeth. Before we forget, let's go ahead and create the ears. I'll make this path the same color as the rest of the head. Let's switch to the select tool and click this lower to bottom button to put it below the rest of the head objects. I'll create an elliptical path in here as well. Next we can add some shadows that we want to be mirrored. I'll start with the eye by creating a path along the bottom here. And now when we come back around, we want to keep this part of the path inside the eye stroke. We'll see why in a bit. Let's close this off. Let's turn off the stroke, and I'll give it a 30% gray fill. Now in the fill and stroke dialog, let's drop down this blend mode box here, and let's choose multiply. This blend mode will darken the colors underneath, and black of course can't be darkened anymore, so the part of the path covering the stroke is invisible now. Let's create a shadow for this part of the nose as well. Let's also do the top part of the gums and the teeth. Okay, we're finished with all the symmetrical stuff, so what we can do now is switch to the select tool and double click the canvas to get out of the group, then select the group and apply the results of the mirror symmetry path effect by going to path, object to path. Now we can work on the asymmetrical parts, like the exposed part of the brain, highlights along the right side of the face, and shadows along the left side. Let's start with the shadow on the left side. I'll just create a path starting near the center of the top of the head and following along the curvature of the face. I'm also going to put the whole left ear in shadow. Like with the other shadows, I'll turn off the stroke, make it 30% gray, and change the blend mode to multiply. I'm going to add a shadow to the inner part of the right ear as well. For the highlight on the right side of the face, we can create a path similar to the shadow. Let's turn off the stroke, and this time we want to give it a white fill. And for the blend mode, we want to use overlay, which makes light colors lighter and dark colors darker. We can add a highlight along the outer part of the right ear too.
I'm also going to put a highlight at the top of the left ear. I'll make this one a bit less intense by lowering the opacity. Next, let's create a path up here for the brain. I'll make the stroke thicker. And give it the same fill color as the gums. We can also add some elliptical paths in here to make it look more brain-like. Let's give it some shadows and highlights as well. Okay, we're finished with the head now, so we can select all of the parts and group them together. Now let's finish up by adding some text. Let's switch to the text tool and click in the canvas. I'll type the word zombie in uppercase letters. For the font family, I'll choose Bimeo, which has thick letters. Now we can switch to the select tool, hold control and scale it up. For the fill color, I'll make it a desaturated version of the highlight color. Next, let's turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, ungroup the paths with this button, then turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. To add a border to this, we can duplicate it with this button, make it black, switch to the Select tool and click the lower one step button, then go to Path, Outset. And we can keep doing Outset with the shortcut control plus the zero key at the top of the keyboard until the border is thick enough. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle covering the bottom third or so of the text. Now make this a desaturated and brighter version of the face color. Let's now select the text and duplicate it. Then shift click the rectangle to add it to the selection and go to Path, Intersection, which removes the non-overlapping parts. Now we can select all the text parts and group them together. Next, let's switch over to the Path Effects dialog, click the plus button, and let's add the Perspective slash Envelope Path Effect. In here, let's check Mirror, Movements, and Vertical, then switch to the Node tool, and now we can grab one of the handles on the bottom corners and drag it out to make the bottom wider. Let's apply the effect by going to Path, Object to Path. Let's also add a bin to the bottom of the text. For this, we can add the Envelope Deformation Path Effect. And here we can click this first button next to Bottom Bin Path, which gives us this green line along the bottom here. Now we can click and hold near the center of the line and drag up to bin the bottom. Let's apply the effect. All right, let's switch to the Select tool and move the text up to about where we want it. Let's click the lower one step button to put it below the head. We can also resize it some if we want. Now let's shift click the head, open the align and distribute dialog with this button up here. Let's click this button here to align them vertically. Okay, that should do it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching.